Let's talk about how you can earn money, or perhaps earn more money, on YouTube. Hi folks, I'm Douglas Kruger. Welcome to From Amateur to Expert, where we talk about work wealth and how to position yourself as an expert in your industry. If you want to become a globally recognized expert or icon on your topic, YouTube is perhaps the best way to do it today. Whether you're training dogs, teaching body language, creating fitness videos, sharing insights into astrophysics, it's quite possible to become a globally recognized icon on the strength of your YouTube channel alone. So let's talk about how to earn revenue from the channel. There are plenty of basic how-to guides available um, that detail the steps involved in setting up and monetizing a YouTube channel. I encourage you to go looking for those, but this is not one of them. Instead, I'd like to share less of a step-by-step -step manual and something more of a set of unique and unusual insights, things that I've noticed that you might not commonly have heard about, eight of them in fact. Number one, it can take 50 videos and then it takes only one. So when I, I have two different YouTube channels, one of them has just shy of 100,000 viewers, uh, subscribers, and that's been on the, on the boil for a long time. And very recently, just halfway through last year, I started a new channel. And that channel for the longest time sat around two, 300 subscribers and then suddenly went up to what it is now, which is 10,000. And in both cases, I can tell you that the slow day-to-day -day or week-by-week -week input of creating new videos certainly helped and added up, but it always takes that one. It's that one video that suddenly becomes popular that gets you the views that goes viral. You may or may not be aware that you have to have a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watched hours in order to qualify for monetization. So with my first site, the bigger one, the, 100, 000, uh, the one that's just shy of 100,000 now, my intention was not to start and run a monetized YouTube channel. I opened that one many years ago as a professional speaker. What I did was I simply shared motivational ideas or I shared videos of myself on a stage. And the point from my perspective at the time was to market myself as a speaker and author. Um, back then, I don't think you were even able to monetize a YouTube channel. Then something interesting happened to me, which was one of my videos went viral. And that is the most watched video that I have now. It's currently sitting at 2.6 million. And on the strength of that, I realized that I could monetize my channel, and then I did. When I then started the new channel, um, this the new one was based on a a book on politics, essentially, philosophy and politics. So it was a completely different topic matter to my business, motivational, wealth and expert positioning matter. So I decided to start a second channel. And with that one, the overt goal was to try to see if I could get it monetized as fast as possible. Now, I already had a previously monetized site, but I nevertheless went and watched several YouTube videos by top experts who do this for a living. And one of them said you need at least 35 unique videos before you could even hope to think about getting your 1,000 uh, subscribers and your 4,000 watched hours. Now, I hate to admit this, but it took me considerably longer than that. And I think you need to know that. I would revise that figure to 50 for you. So that's what happened to me. I got up to about 35 to 40 unique videos uploaded probably sort of twice a week on that YouTube channel. And I was still sitting around 300, 400 uh, subscribers for the longest time. Then that one video went viral, went up to about 300,000 views, and straight away I was able to monetize that channel. And it took me from 400 for a period of about four or five months, all the way up to 10,000 almost in one go. So while there is great value in that slow ticking over of the creation of videos, and while I think you should try to get to 50, I'm gonna revise it upwards from 35, 50 videos as fast as you can, and you should assume you're not going to get monetized until you've done 50 unique videos. You will find that it's generally that one breakaway video that you don't see coming, that you don't anticipate, that's the one that takes you to where you need to be. So my philosophy on that one, based on the idea that it can take 50, but it only takes one, is twofold. Number one, right through all of the depression, through all of the despair, keep blowing on the embers of that fire. It may seem like it's taking a frustratingly long time to get that fire going, but there comes that point where one of them just takes off and the fire roars. So 
you do want to think in terms of trying to create something that might be massively popular, that one viral video, at the same time as you make 50 your goal for unique video creations. Number two, if you haven't monetized yet and you're going for that goal, be careful to catch a viral video early. Once a video suddenly takes off, you will almost instantly have your 1,000 subscribers and your 4,000 watched hours. Now, beyond that point, if you don't monetize, all of that is lost revenue. So you want to keep an eye on those videos and make sure that if one of them starts showing very fast acceleration, that you apply for monetization as quickly as possible. You usually get that within about 24 to 48 hours from YouTube. But of course, that means that in that period, once you've gone beyond those numbers, anything that is not monetized is missed revenue. So there is a setting within the YouTube channel where you can actually see a little dial that shows how far you are and how much further you have to go. Keep an eye on that one and make sure you monetize early. Number three, there is less connection between production quality and success than you may think. And focusing or fixating on the quality may actually mislead your thinking. Now, let me qualify that one very carefully. I do believe that you should focus to some degree on improving your lighting, improving your sound, improving your delivery, and so forth. However, if you think that that is the metric that will determine your success, you are focusing on entirely the wrong thing. That is important but incidental. Why do I say that? Well, nobody clicks on videos because they remember how slick and professional and predictable the last one was. We don't click on videos because we think, ah, that looked like a quality television studio setup. I'm going to click it again. It simply doesn't work that way. The reality of the thing is that we see the thumbnail, we see the person or the idea, and we have this gut instinct that goes, oh, I love this guy. Click on that. What's he saying? Oh, I love her videos. What, what, what's she talking about here? That's what we're after. So there is actually something very misleading about focusing on the quality as the leading metric. It's much more about the oomph of the thing, the personality, the person, the humor, the wit, the hard hitting, the all that stuff that makes us go, oh, it's that guy, click on that. If you keep that as your guiding metric, you're going to be much more successful, much faster. So the goal is not how slick and sedate can this be? That is secondary and incidental. The goal is, can I get to the point where people go, I love that person, click on that quick. Number four, if it goes viral, <laughs> you can do it again and it will work again. This is one that I saw just in the last couple of weeks and it, it really surprised me and I've actually been thinking about it quite a lot. I, I created a video that, has, that went viral and has something like 185,000 views. It's going on for 200,000. Now, as a result of that, I was approached by a group who asked, can we interview you on this topic? I said, yes, they did the interview. My original video was, I think, 24 minutes long. Their cut down interview was 10 minutes long. But it's the same stuff. It's me saying the very same things. As a passing thought, I thought to myself, well, why don't I download that video and then just upload it onto my site as well? I mean, it, it can't do any harm, even though it's essentially a duplicate of the same material. Well, after four days, that duplicate material had 36,000 views. So that caught me by surprise. I thought to myself, but it's the same topic matter. And the more I've thought about this one, the more I've realized it doesn't particularly matter. If you have people that you follow, uh, personalities or commentators that you follow, you will watch them saying the same thing over and over. Heck, we watch uh, sitcoms that we like over and over and laugh at the same jokes multiple times. The same horror movie, we'll watch it like four or five times and it's scarier the fourth and fifth time because you know what's coming and yet there is still delight in doing so. So there's something strange going on here that I hadn't noticed before, but it absolutely works. If you make a viral video, if you do something that works, do it again and do it again very soon. Uh, as a practical example of this one, on this channel, I focus on concepts like work and wealth and so forth. Um, if I make a video that is say, five ways the rich think differently, and suddenly that takes off and gets a, a great deal of views. I should do that again with almost identical content. Perhaps change the angle slightly, give different examples, call it something like, are you thinking poor? Five principles. 
It's the same content and people will enjoy and watch the same content and you will have your video go viral all over again. So as a, as a weird aside, uh, here's something strange. Some of my videos fit both channels. Some fit onto work and wealth as well as onto the political and philosophical channel, which is called Breaking Woke. And the performance is by no means equal. So this is weird. Consider this, one channel has roughly 100,000 viewers, one has roughly 10,000 viewers. So you would think that they would track at 10 to 1 performance if you uploaded the same video onto the two sites. Now, in this case, where I had a video that fit both sites, the same one got 40,000 views on the bigger site, which should mean about 4,000 views on the smaller one. On the smaller one, it was just shy of 1,000. And that makes no sense whatsoever, but I share it with you just in case you are struggling with this kind of despair of an underperforming small site. It may not be the quality. It takes time to get that viewership up. Um, keep at it. Keep blowing on those embers. Number five, going back and changing old thumbnails and old titles can revive a video. Slow performing doesn't mean the video isn't good. If you have something that's lagging behind, it only has a couple of hundred views, or if you're getting tens of thousands typically and it only has a thousand or so views, it doesn't mean that the video is bad. It means people aren't clicking on it, and that's not the same problem. So that's a completely different category of problem, and you can solve it with a better title and a new thumbnail, not by replacing the video. You don't have to re-upload it. You simply go back, edit the video, change the title, change the thumbnail, and save it. That's it. And you can now then readily repost it on your social media platforms again, onto Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever the case might be. Um, and speaking of which, I find from time to time, just doing that with older videos helps. Um, I'll quite regularly just repost an older, an older video to Facebook. And I particularly do that with the well-performing videos, the ones that have had, say, 100,000 views. People will watch them again. There's no downside to simply just posting them again every now and then. And I, I find that if I do that, it'll go from 100,000 views to 105, 110. You get a few thousand extra views and clicks and, and uh, corresponding revenue simply by reposting it. There's no reason not to do it. People will rewatch the older ones. Number six, you can find out how people are phrasing their searches about a topic and you can use those exact keywords in order to ensure that your content is found more often. So use an extension like Keywords Everywhere. That's the one that I use. And if you're, if you're not familiar with this, just do a Google search that says how to use Keywords Everywhere. And it'll run you through the whole thing, you download it. And effectively what happens is, say you're doing a video on uh, how to do more push-ups. You might then type in how to do more push-ups onto Google, and it will show you how people phrase that search, and you'll discover, oh, they actually search for how to do 50 push-ups, and that's the most commonly searched phrase. So knowing that, you can insert that into your keyword tags, and as a result, you are more searchable. Number seven. Here's one that bugs the purist in me. I don't like this, but it works. While it's good to be original, you can earn a great deal of money from a video about another video. One of the best performing videos on my smaller site is sitting at around 300,000 views. And that was the most simple, casual, unplanned, thrown together video I think I've ever done. Normally I script these things and I think about them and I mull them over. That morning I got up with a hunch about a thing I wanted to say and I just, I kind of threw it together. There was a news item on the, on the US elections that I had seen on another uh, YouTube channel. And all I did was I took about a minute out of that, I introduced it, I showed it, and I commented on it. it took me like, like an hour to put the entire thing together. And annoyingly, that massively outperformed my original thought videos. So I don't like it, but I share it with you because it works. And so the philosophy here is, you don't always have to have a completely new revolutionary revelation of an idea. You can simply show someone else's video and comment on it, and it will work, and often it works incredibly well. So 
I hereby release you of the need to do only original videos. You can take something you found fascinating. You can show it, comment on it, and release it, and you could actually end up making more revenue from that than any of your other videos. It is, in fact, a, a pretty good tip if you're trying to get your YouTube channel monetized. If your original content is not getting you there, find something that has mega views. Download a bit of it, show a bit of it, accredit it. In other words, say, this is from this site, this channel, whatever. Then comment and say something about it. That might actually be the thing that gets you monetized. And number eight, duration is not the key determinant. We tend to think that shorter is better. It is absolutely not true. We intuitively believe that the shorter ones get more views. My most viewed video ever, my most popular one, is now sitting at about 2.6 million views, and it has, it's 45 minutes long. It's a, a live speech at a uh, university. The next most popular video, the next one down, is nine minutes long. And the one after that, my third most popular video, is one hour. So <laughs> there is no link. Um, often if you follow the YouTube prescriptions, the, the advice that they give to content creators, they'll often say eight minutes or more is actually quite effective, provided it's entertaining, it's good, it's gripping. And I would not recommend trying to stretch to eight minutes if you don't have an eight minute concept. But apparently eight minutes is, uh, is something of kind of a, a golden point, a, a mark to aim for. On the other side, on my other site, my best performing video is six minutes long. And then the next most popular one is eight minutes long. But then go ahead and count the cat videos that are 45 seconds long and earn more revenue than some, than some medium-sized nations. So there is no link between duration and success. It's really about how much people enjoy the video. And let the, let the duration follow the, the greatest possible or, or strongest representation of your idea, your entertainment, your thought. Finally, don't forget that the revenue from YouTube is obviously not your only option. So it's great to get monetized and you can earn money from that and you can earn quite a good amount of money from that. But in my case, um, I find that I actually earn more from sales of books, from landing presentations for audiences as a result of someone seeing the, uh, the YouTube video, training and so forth. And in my particular case, uh, I, just interesting to me perhaps, I find that the audiobooks have the strongest correlation with my YouTube channel. So if I have a, a good two, three months of YouTube performance, I will have a correspondingly good two or three months of audiobook sales on the Audible platform. Speaking of which, if you are the sort of person who is interested in positioning yourself as an expert via YouTube, you may logically also be the sort of person who, who should write a book on your area of expertise and use that to position yourself as an expert. You can then say things at the beginning of your, your video like, Hi, I am the author of... Um, and it adds credibility and it makes you for real. And it adds a little bit of something to your YouTube channel as well. And of course, there are cross-marketing opportunities. The more books you sell, the more you build your subscriber base. The more you build your subscriber base, the more you can sell books. All of my books are available on Audible. Um, and the one I think that might be of the greatest interest to you would be the one called The Complete Tiny Little Guide to Becoming an Author. It's very short. It's a, it's a simple audio course on how to write nonfiction in order to position yourself as an expert. I do also have a couple of books called Own Your Industry, How to Position Yourself as an Expert, and one titled What Makes Them Great, both of which focus on this. And if the political and philosophical stuff appeals to you, my global new book, Political Correctness Does More Harm Than Good, is also available from Audible. Right, ladies and gentlemen, a question for you. What else might you like to know about YouTube? I'm not an expert on algorithms and all the clever little things people do with SEO and keywords, um, but I seem to have at least some degree of success in just creating and driving content-based YouTube sites. I've done it twice, I've monetized both of them. Um, and I'm happy to create further content for you, so what are you struggling with? What might I be able to help you with? Please just leave a comment below, and if I have a useful insight or two, I'd be glad to create a, a follow-up on this one. Hope that helps. If you haven't subscribed, please do. If you would uh, consider subscribing to the other site, it's called Breaking Woke. And good luck to you as you create and monetize your YouTube channel. I think my abiding advice is that idea about 
blowing on the embers of the fire. This is hard. I did it once and I, I watched the one channel go up to almost 100,000 viewers and I thought it would be easy to do it a second time. It wasn't. It took some 50 videos to get that one going and I, I used to walk around outside under the starlight going, what am I doing wrong? Until that one video simply took off and now both channels are performing well. Keep blowing on the embers, your fire will take off.